Are you there? Meet Sean Wallace. This okay. Naperville nine-year-old likes Legos, playing okay. secret agent, and as it turns out, video cameras. He gets a little hyper. He's also mildly autistic, and he comes here to Easter Seals in Villa Park every week for physical and cognitive therapy. Today is a peer group where he practices social skills with other autistic kids. Today's lesson, keeping your hands to yourself. Does anyone else know why we touch our friends or our family? Sean? Um, the hands? Yeah, you can touch somebody's hands. What would he and Miss Barbie be doing? What kind of touch is this? A shake. A oh. handshake. And according to a recent study, there are more kids like Sean than ever before. A government report released October 5th put the number of American kids with some form of autism at 1 in 91, down from 1 in 150 in 2007, or 1 in 10,000 back in the 1980s. Easter Seals, which runs individual and group therapy sessions for autistic kids, is feeling the increase, and recently added classes at its Naperville Center. We've definitely seen an increase in children coming into our center that either have a diagnosis already of autism spectrum or suspected autism spectrum. But the fact that there are more kids with autism isn't as simple as saying that autism is on the rise. A large part of it is uh, better and earlier detection. Dr. Alan Rosenblatt, a developmental neurologist in Chicago, said the latest numbers probably have more to do with increased awareness than an actual rise in autism, which is actually a good thing. Today's parents are more likely to pick up on problems, and pediatricians are more likely to give a diagnosis of autism than they were, say, 10 or 20 years ago. I have seen um, many children who we are simply just recategorizing. Th uh, children whom we would have provided different diagnostic labels to when I was fresh out of training uh, are now being categorized in, uh, on the autism spectrum. There are other factors, too, ones that have nothing to do with medicine. As autism rates have climbed, so has autism advocacy. Activists have put pressure on insurance companies, social service agencies, and public schools. And the result, Dr. Rosenblatt said, is that a child is sometimes actually better off with a diagnosis of autism than, say, attention deficit disorder. In many cases, there are better services for children with a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder. Laws have been passed in many states now uh, mandating insurance coverage of autism therapies to a much higher limit than for other disabilities. So there's increased awareness, a good thing, and better treatment options, also a good thing. But we had to ask, what if autism really is increasing? It's a possibility and we have to be vigilant to uh, determine whether uh, there is some factor or a combination of factors that may account for a true increase. The problem is there are more questions than answers when it comes to autism. It's a collection of wide-ranging developmental disorders with no single set of symptoms and no clear culprit. Michelle Wallace, Sean's mom, even had a background in childhood education and didn't immediately recognize Sean's symptoms as autism. Being my first child, I was, I was thinking, am I doing something wrong? Um, and I didn't really think it was anything like autism. I didn't even think of that. Most doctors think autism is caused by something called the second hit phenomenon. And the second hit phenomenon refers to somebody with the right genetic makeup who's exposed to some type of environmental factor which subsequently causes uh, an abnormality to occur in the developing brain. But there's no prenatal genetic test and no consensus on what that trigger might be. One thing Dr. Rosenblatt says it's not. The overwhelming evidence shows no causal association between vaccines and autism spectrum disorders. Vaccines have come under fire largely because autism rates began to rise sharply in the 1990s, around the same time the list of recommended vaccines grew. But Rosenblatt said there's no evidence the two are linked and warns that not vaccinating kids could lead to a return of contagious diseases like measles. I think a lot of the discussion around vaccines unfortunately does not take place on a rational level. It takes place more on an emotional level. Uh, the debate continues and so does the research. But for families like the Wallaces, progress can't come soon enough. So we really need to get on board for these kids because the, these kids could have much more productive lives in the future if we do the work that we need to do now. While Sean plays freestag, Michelle meets with parents of other autistic kids in a support group down the hall. They vent, share resources, swap stories, because they're a growing group too, parents of kids with autism.
you guys kind of team up and, and you really want that person to find all the things that they need to help their child. Because really all we want to do is help our children to achieve as much as they can and to be the best people that they can and the most productive that they can in this world. That's so cool. <laughs> For Chicago Parent, I'm Liz Hoffman.